So now we'll look at division and how it works. Remember on the top, the x to the seventh really means that we have x there seven times. And on the bottom, we have x there five times. Now anything that matches in the top and the bottom, we can cross through. So we can cross through that x, that x, that x, that x, and that x. That leaves us with just two x's, or x squared, on the top. It leaves a 1 on the bottom. Now if we divide by 1, it doesn't change anything. 5 divided by 1 is 5, 2 divided by 1 is 2. So x squared divided by 1 is x squared. Let's look at this. Here we'll deal with this 15 over 35 in a second. And, and we'll put this back together after we get done thinking about it. So let's think first of all about these letters like we just talked about. Instead of writing it out, we'll think there are eight X's on the top. There are seven X's on the bottom. So how many extra X's are there? Well, there's one. And that one extra X would be on the top because there's more X's on the top to begin with. Now let's deal with this 15 and 35. So what goes into both 15 and 35, or you could use your calculator to simplify that, but five goes into both of those. So 15 divided by five is three, and 35 divided by five is seven. So the three is on the top, the seven's on the bottom, and this is our answer. Just like when we did multiplication, we had an exponent outside the parentheses, this exponent has to go to everything that's inside the parentheses. So we really have x to the third over four to the third. So the x to the third on top looks like that, and four to the third really means four times four times four, which is 64. Any number with an exponent of 0 is equal to 1. So a to the 0 is equal to 1. So here we have something in parentheses raised to the 0 power. Remember that means that everything in parentheses really has that 0 exponent. It has to go to everything inside. 19 to the 0 power is 1. b to the 0 power is 1. And 1 times 1 is just 1. Now in part b, we have to be a little bit careful because this is really 19 times b to the zero. Here the exponent only goes to the b, not to the 19. So this 19 stays 19, but this part becomes one. So we get 19 times one, which is 19. So let's look at this. Again, we have two things inside the parentheses. The exponent of zero goes to everything like it did in part a. So negative 19 to the 0 power is still just 1 times b to the 0 power is 1. 1 times 1 is still 1. A negative exponent means to move that piece to the opposite part of the fraction. If it was on top, we'll move it to the bottom. If it was on the bottom, we'll move it to the top. So in this part A, we really have 5 to the negative 2 over 1. That negative exponent tells us to move it, so we're going to move it to the bottom. And when we do, it changes the sign of the exponent. It becomes 5 to the second power. We put a 1 on top to hold that spot. And then we know that 5 to the second power means 5 times 5, which is 25. So our answer here is 1 over 25. So in this case, this is over 1, so when we move it to the bottom, it will still be in parentheses, but the exponent sign changes, not the number, just the exponent. So that becomes negative 5 to the second. But remember that negative 5 to the second means negative 5 times negative 5, which is still 25, and keep the 1 on top to hold the place. C is a little bit different. That negative out in front is not part, it doesn't have the parentheses around it, so it doesn't go with the exponent. 
So when we move this, we'll just keep the negative. We can actually put it out in front. We'll put a one on top to hold the spot. This becomes five to the second because the exponent sign changes each time we move it. And we already said that was one over 25, but that negative that was in front just stays in front. So we get negative one over 25. So this looks a little different here. Now we have that five to the negative two in the bottom, but a negative exponent just means move it. So if it's on the bottom, we're gonna move it to the top. And when we do, it becomes a positive exponent. We put one on the bottom to hold that spot. So five to the second power is 25 over one, which is just 25. So this negative two that's on the outside goes to everything that's inside, right? So we have five to the negative two, a to the negative two, and six to the negative two. Now remember that negative exponent means to move it. So this that was on top is gonna to be on the bottom. This that was on top is gonna to move to the bottom. And this that was on the bottom is gonna move up to the top. When we do that, the exponent becomes positive. So the six to the second will be on the top, five to the second on the bottom, a to the second on the bottom. And then we can simplify the numbers. Six times six is 36, five times five is 25, a to the second. So in this problem, let's put dots in between the multiplication. That helps a lot of times kind of separate things for your eyes. Okay, anything that has a negative exponent needs to be moved. Now always do that first. Make your exponents positive before you start. So this is going to have to move to the bottom. This is going to have to be moved to the bottom. And this one's going to have to be moved to the top. Everything else doesn't have a negative exponent, so it stays. It doesn't get moved. So the 18 will still be on the top. The 15 will still be on the bottom. This Y will still be on the bottom. But that X to the negative 7 that was on the bottom will now be on the top, and it becomes a positive 7. The X to the third that was on the top is not going to be on the bottom. And the Y to the negative 2 that was on the top is not going to be on the bottom. And now we can do some simplification. We can reduce this, because you can divide both by 3. So 18 divided by 3 is 6, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. Here, we want to do some um, combining. We have 7 x's on top, and 3 in the bottom. That leaves us with 4 extra x's, and they'll be on the top because we had more on the top to begin with. And then these we can put together. Remember this means I have two y's and one y. They're all on the bottom, so we're just putting them together. It gives us y to the third. We'll do this again here. We have five. Remember it goes to everything inside. So we're gonna split it apart and write it to everything inside. Well, that's a y on the end here. Now, um, this 5 to the negative 3, let's just go ahead and write as 5 to the negative 3 for a second, times. Here, remember when we have exponents side by side, it means we multiply those exponents. So we have negative 21 there. And here we have exponents side by side, so we multiply them, which gives us a positive 6. Now let's make that be in fraction form so we can see about moving things. This has a negative exponent, so it needs to be moved. This has a negative exponent, so it needs to be moved, but the y doesn't, so it's gonna stay on top. So when we move it, it makes it be a positive exponent. And we're almost done, we just need to do five to the third. Five times five times five, which is 125. And that's our final answer. This is the same idea. Let's 
as problems we've done earlier. Let's break it apart with some dots so it's a little bit easier for our eyes to take in. Okay, so again, let's first of all put these two fractions together. That's just multiplying. So remember, you multiply fractions straight across. We can do some reducing actually here first. Those 2 divided by 2 was 1, so those will cancel out. And here we can divide both by 7, so this will cancel out and give me a 3. A negative divide, times a negative is a positive, so those fractions will go together and just end up with this plain old 3. Let's go ahead and write our fraction bar because we can see that this has a negative exponent, so it's going to have to go on the bottom. And this has a negative exponent, so it's going to have to go on the bottom. This has a positive exponent, so we'll put it on the top. And then remember, we just did a second ago, anything to the zero power is actually one, so let's just write times one. Then we'll do a little bit of combining here. We have one M on top and two M's on the bottom, so that would cancel out. There's one extra M and that would be on the bottom. There's an N on the bottom, and then three times one is three. One more. Again, will help to break it apart into some separate pieces. Let's do 9 times 10 first, gives us 90. We'll go ahead and write our fraction bar because this has a negative exponent, so it's going to go on the bottom. This has a negative exponent, so it's going to go on the bottom. And this is to the zero power, which means it's really just 1. So we have 90 times 1 is 90. This is 8 p's and 2 more p's, which gives me 10 p's.